फिर हौसला बना लिया है ऊंची उड़ान का फिर देखना फिजुल है कद आसमान का हेलो माय डियर मैकेनिकल चैंपियंस व्हाट्सअप कैसे हैं सब लोग कैन यू गाइज हियर मी माय सेल्फ चंद्रशेखर वेलकमिंग यू ऑल टू दिस ब्यूटीफुल सेशन ऑफ फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स वेयर वी विल बी प्रैक्टिसिंग 24 most important, most beautiful questions from the fluid mechanics for our ISRO 2023 exam. So those who are watching live, please respond through the comment section. Hi Sumit, welcome, good to see you. How are you? Namaskar, Adab, Shubh, Shan, Suprabhat. Good afternoon, welcome to the session. So you are watching me live from from the series. Which we have just started a couple of days back for improving your performance for your ISRO 2023 examination. So, first of all, tell me what is my voice reaching you? Am I audible and visible to everyone? Yes, yes. Am I audible and visible to everyone? This is my quick introduction for those who are attending the session for the very first time. I am mechanical engineering graduate from IIT Delhi. having more than 10 years of teaching experience in the field of gate ies and psus i have also cleared engineering services examination and i had worked in a uh, steel authority of india limited as well as in a private consulting firm for more than 2 years all right so my working experience industry experience is more than 4 years and after that i am completely into teaching from the last 10 plus years guiding the students who are preparing for various competitive examination and i am quite comfortable in these many subjects of mechanical engineering all right please make some noise those who are watching me live so that i can also understand i can also come to know your energy your participation your dedication and your positivity please do write something in the comment section whatever you feel like if you want to connect with me you can always connect with me through the mail id which is mentioned on the top of the screen and if you will join me on the telegram the my telegram channel is mechanical by chandrashekhar once you become part of my telegram group then your preparation journey will become more smooth because we are going to provide so many things which will be required to improve your preparation to make your preparation journey more result oriented all right now i cannot see your comments those who are not writing in the comment section those who are not participating we do not require those students who do not participate those who are are not open to share the, their knowledge we do not want in the session hi aspirant welcome good morning good afternoon so a couple of important announcement then we will directly jump to the questions all right so keep your pen and notebook handy and try to solve as many questions as possible correctly with minimum time taken so let us see out of 24 questions how many questions you will be giving me the right answer to so there is an important workshop free workshop which is going to be conducted on 20th of june at 7:30 pm taken by rakesh sir how to clear the gate examination and in 8 months so many students have a doubt how much time will be required to crack the gate examination so rakesh sir will be discussing all the aspects all the important tips and tricks so that you will be able to crack the gate examination with the best possible rank within 8 months of preparation all right so if so to register for the workshop the link is already there in the description box all right shall we start there are important links also there in the description box please go through the description box after the session to register yourself for the workshop and to register yourself for the scholarship as and to download the uh, free ebooks as well all right so let us start with question number 1 shall we start this is question number 1 on the screen yes i want you guys to participate to give me the answer through the comment section and in case of any doubt 
you are most welcome to ask me your doubt as well yes aspirant i am ready are you <laughs> aspirant all right what is the answer sumit aspirant where are others mute spectators will not be allowed to be part of this session do not be mute spectator the question is from your basic physics how to find out the error 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 in measurement you must have studied in 11th class or so error how to find out the error in measurement what is the answer to this look the relationship is given by this the first step is taking log on both sides the first step is taking log on both sides if we take the log on both sides let me hide myself if you take log on both sides then can we say log of q is equal to n1 log of k plus n1 into log of q1 plus n2 into log of q2 and so on isn't it then the second step is differentiate on both the sides if we differentiate then we will get the error what is the what is the differentiation of natural log we are taking natural log we are taking the natural log on both sides let me take ln natural log ln of k ln and ln if you differentiate what is the differentiation of ln q that is dq by q is equal to what is the differentiation of constant zero so it is n1 into dq1 by q1 plus n2 into dq2 by q2 and so on so what will be the answer yes sumit we know the aspirant well done option a will be the correct answer this is how we can find out the error in measurement right option a will be the correct answer what yes it is q2 yes aspirant right it is not q0 it is q1 then q2 then q3 yes q1 q2 q3 so option a will be the correct answer for question number 1 what is the what will be the answer for question number 2 question number 2 on your screen i want everyone to respond do not be new spectator learn from vinod aspirant and sumit they are participating don't be afraid of committing mistakes 100 meter of water column is equal to this is very very simple question this is very simple let me see who will be the first to get me the correct answer to this one 100 meter of water column is the pressure head pressure can be represented in terms of pressure head of any fluid so it is in terms of pressure head of water so if we want to convert it into pascal then density of water into g into h of water density of water is 10 to the power 3 then g will be taken as let us 10 and 100 meter that much is newton per meter square or pascal so what will be the answer to the second one so it is 1000 kilo newton per meter square options are in kilo newton per meter square naruto how it is b how it is b a slight mistake might make your question incorrect so the answer will be a yes aspirant sumit vinod well done guys deepak c no it is not 10 newton per meter square is 10 to the power 6 so 10 to the power 3 kilo newton per meter square if you want to convert newton into kilo newton we should divide by 1000 1 newton is equal to 10 to the power minus 3 kilo newton isn't it so option a will be the right answer for this one those who have committed mistake do not repeat the mistake in your exam let us move to the question number 3 quickly question number 3 the question is from the internal flow flow in a pipe yes the calculation mistake are the most dangerous why because if you do not know the answer if you do not know the concept then you might commit mistake so you are ready to accept your mistake but when you know the concept when you know the question and because of slight mistake calculation mistake you will not be able to get the correct answer to this 
then it will be more uh, it will be you will feel more bad right so do not avoid the calc avoid the calculation mistake by concentrating on the question your concentration your lack of concentration makes you commit the mistakes for the flow through a horizontal pipe the pressure gradient dp by dx in the flow direction dp by dx so if you know for a steady and uniform flow for a steady and uniform flow it means discharge is constant and the uniform flow means area is constant so velocity is constant so for the constant kinetic energy if it is a horizontal pipe z1 is equal to z2 so the pressure will decrease in the flow direction to compensate the loss so as x increases the flow direction the pressure will decrease to compensate the energy loss to compensate the loss to compensate the loss so if we say dp by dx that is the slope of pressure variation with x is negative and the value will be constant it is negative constant it is negative constant because the variation of pressure is linear p is a function of linear p is a function of x is linear the variation is linear pressure gradient is also called as hydraulic gradient we can also call it as hydraulic gradient what is the unit of hydraulic gradient anybody can let me know the unit it is also called as hydraulic gradient what is the unit of this can anybody let me know the unit of hydraulic gradient can we write it as pascal per meter or can we call it as newton per meter cube can you know any other parameter which is having the unit newton per meter cube specific weight is also having the unit so this is called as negative pressure gradient is called as favorable pressure gradient we call it as favorable favorable pressure gradient so the dimension formula is m1 l minus 2 t minus 2 isn't it it is called as favorable pressure gradient negative pressure gradient is called as favorable pressure gradient because it it helps the fluid to flow it supports the flow so the answer to the question is option d how many of you have got the correct answer d will be the answer right good let us move to the next one next question was asked in pyq also can you solve it the only challenging thing is to do the calculation without using the calculator this is question number four the transition Reynolds number for the flow over a flat plate it is the from the boundary layer theory is 5 into 10 to the power 5 that is the transitional value they may not have given you this value they may not give you this value you should memorize this value 5 into 10 to the power 5 is called as the critical Reynolds number which at which the transition of flow takes place from laminar to turbulent right aspirant we are talking about the real flow as long as it is not mentioned as long as it is not mentioned the flow will be real ideal flow does not exist ideal flows does not exist in reality that is why whenever nothing is mentioned regarding the flow we can we can talk about the real flow getting it aspirant so that is the basic assumption or basic idea what is the distance from the leading edge at which the transition will occur for the flow of water with a uniform velocity of 1 meter per second that is the free stream velocity and for what are the kinematic viscosity they may not use the word kinematic because the unit will decide whether it is dynamic or kinematic viscosity yes deepak the flow always takes place from high energy to low energy it is not the pressure which decides the flow direction it is always the total hydraulic energy of the fluid which decides the flow direction so if the pressure remains constant uh, sorry if the kinetic energy remains same if the flow is uniform if the pipe is horizontal it means the potential energy remains same so more is the pressure energy more will be the total energy so that is why in in, in such a special case we can say the flow will take place from high pressure to low pressure but provided the velocity must be same it must be uniform flow the potential energy must be same the pipe should be horizontal 
otherwise the concept says it is the total hydraulic energy of the fluid which decide the flow direction yes what is the answer for this Reynolds number is equal to u infinity into x by kinematic viscosity if we talk about the critical value of x so x c r is equal to Reynolds number 5 into 10 to the power 5 into 0 0.858 into 10 to the power minus 6 upon 1 isn't it so it will be 5 into 10 to the power minus 1 isn't it so it is around 5 into 0 0.08 something are you getting it or not 5 into 0 0.085 so what is 0 0.08 into 5 so it is around 40 so 0.4 it is something around 0.4 meter it is something around 0.4 meter so option Yes, Sumit, the transition of flow from laminar to turbulent takes place when the viscous force becomes less dominant. As long as the viscous forces are dominating, then the flow will be laminar organized. As long as the viscous force dominates, so Reynolds number is the ratio of inertia force by viscous force. If the viscous forces are large, we can say Reynolds number is small. For the small value of Reynolds number, the flow is laminar. When the viscous force becomes less dominating, when the Reynolds number becomes higher, then the fluid particles start mixing from one layer into another, then the flow becomes turbulent. All right, got it. Let us move to the next one. The next question. Yes, give me the answer to this one. between section 1 and 2 of a pipe a pump a heater and very rough pipe and an orifice plate are placed the Bernoulli equation can be applied between 1 and 2 if what will be the answer the Bernoulli equation will be applied this is question number 5 so first of all you need to have know the difference between Bernoulli equation and energy equation. The energy equation will be applicable everywhere. Energy conservation is universal law. This is universal. Energy conservation is universal. So energy conservation is applicable everywhere. Even when there are losses, even when there are, uh, there are some external energy supplied or anything. Because the total energy always remains constant. So, the total energy, energy of universe is all, always constant. Energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, right? So, energy conservation equation is applicable everywhere. But whenever we talk about the Bernoulli equation, Bernoulli equation is applied when there is no energy loss taking place between 1 and 2. Bernoulli equation is the spatial equation which is applied only to ideal flow. When there is no energy loss taking place between 1 and 2 and when there is no energy supplied or removed. No energy supplied or removed between 1 and 2. When there is no energy supplied or removed between 1 and 2. There is no work transfer, there is no heat transfer. So, these are the conditions when we are supposed to apply the Bernoulli equation. These are the conditions where we are supposed to apply the Bernoulli equation. So, in heater, work transfer takes place, isn't it? Heater is, heater means work transfer takes place. The question is uh, a mix of, the question is the mix of uh, thermodynamics and fluid mechanics. Whenever a heater is attached, we can have the electrical energy getting transferred or it is called as electrical work transfer. If the pipe is rough, then there is energy loss. Energy losses will take place in case of a rough pipe. When a pump is attached, then energy is supplied. Mechanical energy is supplied to the pump. There is an energy supplied and orifice plates due to sudden convergence there is energy loss 
देयर इज एनर्जी लॉस ड्यू टू सडन कन्वर्जेंस इन केस ऑफ ऑरिफेस मेटल द कन्वर्जेंस इज सडन so th there should not be any energy loss between 1 and 2 that is one point and the second point is there should not be any energy removed or added between 1 and 2 when these are the condition then we can apply the bernoulli equation which is the energy conservation equation for an ideal flow so the answer to this question is all these things must be removed from point 1 and point 2 All of them, yes, Harsha, aspirant. So many students are having biased opinion. The answer to this question must be D. The heater must be removed. The rough pipe should not be there. The pump should not be allowed between one and two, and there should not be any other instrument which which makes the energy loss. So D will be the answer to this question. All right. what about the next one so this is how this is how the questions are framed where theoretical question or conceptual question you can have you can have the the multiple option looks like correct so you should be very very careful in theoretical question or conceptual question numerical question you can easily find out the answer to either you will get the right answer or you will get the wrong answer there are only two options but in case of theoretical or conceptual question there might be a possibility you may have a doubt between two or more options what is the answer to this one a one dimensional flow is the one uniform flow the uniform flow is the uniform flow can be two dimensional isn't it when the area is constant when the cross sectional area is constant then the flow is called as uniform or we can say velocity is constant magnitude of velocity is constant that is called as uniform so one one dimensional flow does not mean the flow to be uniform are you getting it one dimensional flow does not mean the flow to be steady or unsteady it can be one dimensional steady flow it can be one dimensional unsteady flow one dimensional can be steady it can be unsteady 1d flow can be steady or unsteady a and b are incorrect now your turn what is the what is your opinion between c and d the flow will be one dimensional what is your opinion i want everyone to give your opinion whether it is correct or incorrect that does not matter so final sahid kabhi aap d bol rahe acha aap d bol rahe harsha t bol rahe Sumit C, Naruto D. So what will be the aspirant? बताइए आप C बोल रहे C or D? Let me tell you whether it is 1D, 2D or 3D. There is always zero component of velocity in transfer direction. Normal velocity is always zero. The velocity is always zero in normal direction. Whenever there is a streamline, if you take the tangent will represent the velocity the tangent will represent the velocity vt which is non zero but if we take the component in normal direction velocity is always zero so zero transfer components of velocity will be there in 1d 2d and 3d the one dimensional flow is the one which is having straight stream lines the stream lines should not be curved The, if the stream lines are straight then it is called as one dimensional flow do you get it one dimensional flow means take place in the straight line either they are horizontal or they are inclined does 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 not matter these are known as one dimensional flow when the flow takes place along the straight stream lines it is called as one d flow do you get it sahid do you agree to my logic or my explanation The next question on your screen, question number seven. Can you get me the answer to the question number seven? A piece weighing three kg in air. Whenever you find air, then we can say buoyant force by air is very very small, almost zero. So the weighing machine reads three kg. So can we say weight of the body is equal to three into g newton? And The weight is found to be 2.5 kg. It is actually kgf. 
do not get confused with the unit it is the weight is always measured in kilogram for kgf and if you multiply with g for 9.81 we will get it newton so in terms of newton weight of the body is 3 into g isn't it then the net weight this is the net weight what is the apparent weight or the net weight that is the actual weight minus bind force so that is 2.5 kg so do you agree bind force by water is equal to 3 minus 2.5 that is 0 0.5 into g newton do you agree or not yes what is the answer so weight can be rate taken as density of the body into g into volume of the body and bind force by water can be written as density of water into g into volume of the body because the body is completely submerged if we divide these two sorry if we divide these two then what we will get g g v b v b getting cancelled out so density of the body upon density of water will be 3 upon 0 0.5 that is 6 that is called as specific gravity of the body what is the specific gravity of the body b con bol rahe why you guys are saying b specific gravity of the body c hoga na 3 upon 0 0.5 where is the mistake what is the confusion in this isn't it option C? Bataye? Are you guys getting it or not? Achha, C is the right answer. Yes. So, ignore the bind force by air or we can say the actual weight of the body is 3 into G Newton. And because the apparent weight is 2.5 kg when submerged in water, so we can say bind force by water is actual weight minus the apparent weight. So that is 0 0.5 g Newton. So if we divide these two, we will get the specific gravity of the body. This is very simple. This is very simple. Those who do not know torsely equation, those who do not know torsal equation, they are not mechanical engineer. They cannot be the mechanical engineer. What is the answer to this one? What is the answer? Quickly, do let me know. And guys, do not forget to like this session and share with all your friends so that it reaches to everyone who is aspiring to crack isro 2023 exam all right so the answer to this question is no need to explain cv into root to gh this is the theoretical velocity root to gh is theoretical velocity there will be a coefficient of velocity coming into picture though the coefficient of velocity lies between 0 0.96 to 0 0.99 it is very close to one so b will be the answer the next question is from the hydrostatic force on a curved surface. The horizontal component of hydrostatic force on a curved surface. If there is a curved surface, if you want to find out the hydrostatic force, pressure force by the fluid in hydrostatic condition, then the horizontal component we are interested in. How to calculate the horizontal component? Take the vertical projection of this curve. If we take the vertical projection, and find out the force on the vertical projection rho g a x bar apply the formula rho g a x bar to the vertical projection to find out the horizontal component of hydrostatic force so product of pressure at its centroid and area no product of pressure at its centroid not at its centroid at the centroid at the centroid of vertical projection isn't it it is at the centroid of vertical projection. Pressure at the centroid of the vertical projection is the average pressure into area. So, it is not the pressure at the centroid of the curved surface. So, that is why A will not be right. Weight of the liquid retained by the curved surface, that is the vertical force. That we call it as vertical force. Weight of the fluid which can be contained by the curve up to free surface. That is Fp. So, this is about Fp. So, that is why horizontal force will not be B force on a vertical projection of the curved surface. Option C, yes, it is the force exerted on the vertical projection. Weight of the liquid vertically above the curved surface. The 
this is also for fe there is a slight difference between b and d it is always the weight of the liquid which can be contained by the curve up to free surface so option c is the right answer yes everyone good good sumit naruto stahit aapne option a ko tick kiya please check the next question this question was i also asked previously in isro exam i must have discussed this type of question also the maximum depth from which a centrifugal pump can draw water is the maximum depth from which or the this is the let us say the sump level and there is a suction pipe and there is a pump attached so let me find out this h to be maximum so here p1 let me call it is point 1 point 1 p1 is equal to atmospheric pressure so here p is the suction pressure so can we say p atm minus p suction or we can say p atm minus rho of water into g into h is equal to p suction isn't it or we can say rho of water into g h is equal to p atm minus p suction if we want h to be maximum so p suction must be minimum and what is the minimum value of suction pressure that is zero if we take suction pressure as zero so we can say density of water into g into h max is almost p atm if we put the value 10 to the power 3 into 10 into h maximum what is atmospheric pressure that is 10 to the power 5 pascal around 10 to the power 5 pascal isn't it so the value of maximum value of h is around 10 meter it is around 10 meter option c c will be the answer it is around 10 meter right option c will be the correct answer suction pressure it is the absolute always we use the absolute pressure we do not use the gauge pressure in the analysis of pump because the the pressure at the sump level is patm so atmospheric pressure need to be considered that is why the absolute pressure and minimum absolute pressure can be zero option c is the right answer all right and one more important announcement there is a scholarship test going to be conducted on 18th of june at 12 pm you should register yourself for this scholarship test based on your performance in the scholarship test you will be able to avail that respective discounts in our various paid courses moreover you will understand your level of preparation because you will be competing among your competitors so the, there are two benefits and do not forget to register yourself first for appearing for the scholarship test the link for the registering is already there in the description box this is beautiful please solve this question this is question number 11 we are half way we are almost half way now the one who will give me the right answer for this question will get a chocolate the one who will bring the correct answer to this question are you able to see see the figure no i don't think so let me hide myself now acha ab visible hai sumit can you see it now chocolate ka sawal hai every one of you get me the answer do not commit mistake in the parameters provided there is s1 there is s2 there is s1 s2 only there are two fluids s1 and s2 there is h1 h2 and h3 there are three heights given h1 h2 and h3 we need to find out the pressure difference between a and b in terms of head of water you are supposed to write your pressure equation in terms of water head can you get me the answer quickly har jeet to sirf parinam hai कोशिश करना हमारा काम है 
so do the hard work do not worry about the results results will definitely be in your favor yes 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 i am waiting 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 quickly quickly solve it वाह क्या बात है बहुत खूब बहुत बढ़िया वेल डन गुड कॉन्सेप्ट आपके स्ट्रॉन्ग है मैंने आपको थोड़ा कम आका मैंने सिंपल सवाल दे दिया आपको चॉकलेट के लिए नरुतो एस्पिरेंट सुमित साहिद आप चूक गए चॉकलेट से थोड़ा सा लेट मी लेट मी राइट द प्रेशर इक्वेशन लेट मी शो यू वॉट विल बी द आंसर लेट मी राइट द प्रेशर इक्वेशन using jumping method do you know what is jumping method if you have studied the fluid mechanics from me you must know the jumping method there are two methods one is called a jumping method and we will write the 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 pressure equation in terms of in terms of water head because your options are in terms of water head so the pressure at ea let me assume it as pa PA will come out to be यार पता नहीं क्या होता है ये PA will come out to be in terms of water head PA is the pressure according to Pascal law here also pressure will be PA right now we are traveling in upward direction because we are traveling in upward direction there is a decrease in pressure according to hydrostatic law minus then we are traveling in fluid of specific gravity S1 so can we say what is the density what is the density do you agree density is rho of water into s1 into that is rho1 up into h1 and convert it into water so divide by density of water we are here now can we jump from here to here these two points will have same pressure because they are can they are joined by the continuous mass of same static fluid from the top so we can jump from here to here no change in the pressure equation and we can also jump from the second limb to the third limb because they are also these two points are also joined by the continuous mass of same static fluid in a horizontal plane now we are here on the right rightmost limb then we are traveling in upward direction again minus then we are traveling in manometric fluid specific rate of manometric fluid is s2 so the density is rho of water into s2 that is the density into we are traveling h2 upon we need to convert it into water head divide by density of water we are writing rho 1 h1 is equal to rho 2 h2 this is how conversion of one fluid column can be can be done into another we are here now we are moving in upward direction again minus now we are traveling in s1 fluid so density of water into s1 is the density of the fluid into we are traveling at three height upon density of water we have reached to our destination that is the pressure at b so we can say pa minus pb will be equal to so this these two get cancel out these will get cancel out these will get cancel out that can be s1 h1 plus s2 h2 plus s3 h sorry s1 h3 isn't it isn't it this is the pressure difference in terms of water head so what is the answer s1 h1 plus h2 h2 plus s1 h3 d will be the answer d will be the right answer if you see the options closely you will find there is a difference between all the options given there is minute difference between all the options given is this all clear please give me thumbs up please if you understood the concept please do like this session the next question on your screen very simple and very important type of question memory based question isro will ask you the questions based on memory also the various dimensional less numbers and how to memorize the effect of the forces considered yes what is the answer euler number do you know the trick i have told you guys so many times euler used to be the person who take who used to take the pressure of each and every department because there is euler equation in mathematics there is euler equation in 
fluid mechanics, there is Euler equation in physics, strength of materials everywhere. So, Euler number is related with the pressure 1, A1, 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 A1. So, these three options get ruled out. Option C is the right answer. Fraud number gravity is the fraud because gravity is the only force which attracts the body. Otherwise, the force is always appears in pairs. Reynold number, there is no need to have a trick to memorize. The Reynold number is always about the viscous force. And Weber number, Weber used to be the person who was always in tension because of his name starting with W. Because of his roll number, always in the last of the each and every class. Elastic force, Mac number, macho, bade aram se. Alright? So, C is the right answer for this one. Let us move to the next question. Question number 13. Yes. The next question on your screen. Very simple question. Bataya to? Sahid? Acha, aapko nahi pata trick. Abhi, abhi, jau, mehne bataya. Her number mein, the numerator is always inertia force. Denominator will keep on changing. This is the dimensionless number. The ratio of forces. Agar denominator is the viscous force, then it is Reynold number. Inertia force by viscous force. There is nothing to... To, there is no trick required because Reynolds number we use in our analysis of the fluid mechanics, right? Now, Euler used to be the person who was taking the pressure of each and every department. Euler equation is there in mathematics, Euler equation is there in fluid mechanics, strength of materials, physics, everywhere. So, when the pressure force comes in denominator, then Euler equation, uh, Euler number. The dimensionless number is Euler number. Fraud, gravity is considered as fraud. People believe that gravity is the fraud because the gravity is the only force which attracts the body. Otherwise, there are forces which exist in pairs. There is attraction, there is repulsion. Gravity is the only force which attracts. So, there is a lot of hidden mysteries in gravity. So, it is considered as a fraud. Weber number, Weber, because of his name starting with W, his roll number used to be in the last always. And that is why he was always in tension because when Mem used to call for Viva, she used to start calling the students from the last roll number. You will not understand until and unless you feel that how it feels when you are having the last roll number or the first roll number. Ye dard unhi ko hi pata hota hai jinke saath aisi ghatna hoti hai. We cannot live without fluid mechanics others. Fluid mechanics is very very important for ISRO. Fluid mechanics and thermal are the most important subjects for ISRO. Right? Mach number, when the elastic force comes in the denominator, then it is Mach number. Right? Shahid, aap ke liye repeat kiya The next question, question number 13 on your screen. The next one. The harder you work, the more luck you will have in your examination. People say it is always, it is all about the luck. If you are having a good luck, then you will clear the examination. If you are not having the bad, good luck, then you will not clear the examination. The luck favors only those who do the hard work. So, luck and hard work go hand in hand. So, do not always fully believe on the luck factor. You should do your hard work. You should do your, your part. Luck will always be in your favor. A single stage impulse turbine with a diameter of 120 centimeter. So, can we call it as 1.2 meter? Runs at 300 RPM. That is N. If the blade speed ratio, what is the blade speed ratio? Do you know? It is about the definition only. Blade speed ratio is the ratio of blade velocity to the fluid velocity. That is 0.42. Then what is the inlet velocity of the steam? We need to find out the V. V is the velocity of the steam. So, we can say V is the equal to U upon 0.42. What is U? Pi d n by 0.42 into 60. Pi d n by 60. If we want in meter per second, isn't it? Pi d n by 60 is U, U, blade speed. So, put the values. Pi into diameter is 1.2 into n 3000 upon 0.42 into 60 meter per second. Are you able to solve without calculator? 
विल यू बी एबल टू सॉल्व विदाउट कैलकुलेटर विल यू बी एबल टू सॉल्व विदाउट कैलकुलेटर सो इट इज अराउंड थ्री पॉइंट वन फोर इंटू वन पॉइंट टू इंटू फिफ्टी अपॉन जीरो पॉइंट फोर टू जीरो पॉइंट फोर टू कैन बी टेकन एज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव इफ यू टेक इट एज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव देन द न्यूमिनेटर विल बिकम हंड्रेड दिस विल बिकम ऑलमोस्ट हंड्रेड सो थ्री पॉइंट वन फोर और वी कैन से थर्टी वन पॉइंट फोर इंटू ट्वेल्व और इट इज क्लोज टू सिक्स हंड्रेड सॉरी इट इज क्लोज टू थ्री फिफ्टी और समथिंग सो फोर फिफ्टी विल बी द आंसर फोर फिफ्टी सेवेंटी नाइन विल नॉट बी करेक्ट सेवेंटी नाइन विल नॉट बी करेक्ट इज एंड इट सो इफ यू टेक इट एज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव सो इट इज ग्रेटर देन द वैल्यू शुड बी ग्रेटर देन थ्री पॉइंट वन फोर इंटू वन पॉइंट टू इंटू हंड्रेड So it is greater than three one four into one point two. So it is four fifty, right? The next one, the next question is very simple. No, 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 Sumit. Calculator will not be allowed in ISRO. That is the most challenging thing. There will not be any calculator allowed in ISRO exam. The next question, question number. We are at question number fourteen. We are at question number fourteen. For laminar flow over a flat plate, the thickness of the boundary layer at a distance from the leading edge is found to be five mm. The thickness of the flow is laminar. This is important thing. Sometimes they may ask about the turbulent flow. The thickness of the boundary layer at the downstream section, which is at twice the distance of the previous section, so x two becomes x twice of x one. Then what will be the Thickness of boundary layer. Do you agree for laminar flow delta is directly proportional to root x for laminar flow? So delta two by delta one is equal to under root of x two by x one. X two by x one is two. So delta two is equal to two into sorry root two into delta one. So root two into five mm. Do not commit mistake in selecting the option B or C. Do not commit mistake in B or C. It is B which is correct. B is the answer. If it would have been turbulent flow, if it would have been turbulent flow, what is the relation between delta and x? What is the relation between delta and x? Can you let me know? Isn't it four by five? नहीं एस्पिरेंट फोर बाई फाइव इट विल बी फोर बाई फाइव फॉर टर्बलेंट बाउंड्री लेयर राइट लेट अस मूव टू द नेक्स्ट वन दिस क्वेश्चन इज ब्यूटीफुल कैन यू गाइस सॉल्व द नेक्स्ट वन क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टीन We are at question number fifteen. We are having twenty-four questions to solve in next ten minutes. Will we be able to do that? An automobile which is moving at a velocity of forty kilometer per hour is experiencing a wind resistance of two kilo newton. All right. If the automobile is moving at a velocity of fifty kilometer per hour, then the power required to overcome the wind resistance. The question is. has gone to the next level can you guys solve it so first of all we need to find out the resistance force or the drag force is given by cd into projected area into rho u square by 2 so we can say the drag force is directly proportional to u square first of all find out the drag force in the second case fd2 upon fd1 is equal to u2 by u1 square So what is that? What is U two? Fifty kilometer per hour. U one forty kilometer per hour square, isn't it? 
so fd2 is equal to fd1 so what is fd2 that is equal to 2 into 5 by 4 square kilo newton that is fd2 the wind resistance if the question asks you to find out the wind resistance in the second case then your answer will be calculated by this but the question is about the power in the second case what is the power in the second case so the power will be in second case we will say fd2 into u2 what is fd2 that is 2 kilo newton or 2 into 5 by 4 square kilo newton into u u2 what is u2 u2 is 50 kilometer per hour you need to convert it into meter per second isn't it you need to convert it into meter per second then only you will get kilowatt then only you will get kilowatt because the options are in kilowatt because all the options are in kilowatt can you solve this question can you guys solve this one now Two into twenty-five upon sixteen into so forget about this. So it is five hundred upon thirty-six. Can you do the calculation? It is around three. 3 into 500 upon 36, 1500 upon 36, 1500 upon 36, it is around 42 or 43 something, 43.4, it is around 43.4, yes. Yes, aspirant. If you see the option, if you are getting around 550 kilowatt, then you will be able to select the right answer option A. A will be the correct answer. That is how without using the calculator, you can get the nearest correct answer. I am taking this as around 3. 50 by 16 is around 3. 16, 3 is a 48. Right? And are you aware that we have started a short series that is mechanical versus civil war. Today there will be a session today at 5 p.m. 5 to 5.30 there will be a session on YouTube and 5.30 to 6 there will be a quiz on app. YouTube plus app series. And today strength of materials SMD and BMD. will be taken by Abhinav sir and the top winners, winners will get the gift hampers. So do join for this series. If you have not downloaded the app yet, please do download the Baiju's app from the play store and get yourself ready to make the mechanical engineers win this war. There will be only four sessions and tomorrow I will be taking the same session at 5 p.m. For the Bernoulli equation, first half, half an hour I will discuss about the Bernoulli equation and then for the next half, half an hour there will be a quiz on the app, Baiju's app for regarding the Bernoulli equation, alright? Acha aspirant, aapki chocolate, mili nahi aapko? Chaliye, ye question agar aap solve karoge, to definitely you will get the chocolate. The one who will get me the right answer will not only get a chocolate, but a bigger chocolate. This is the most beautiful question. This is the most beautiful question for this session. Ah, Shahid, you are civil? Se hai kya? Iska answer bataiye. This is the most beautiful question. 
first of all try to read the question and understand it first read the question and understand it and please do share this session to mechanical and civil as well because the fluid mechanics is common for mechanical and civil shahid please share this this session to all your civil civil friends so that they can also watch the recording if you are if they are not able to be live because the fluid mechanics is a common subject fluid mechanics and strength of materials are common subjects for civil and mechanical so can you find me the answer for this one a constant water tank if i draw the diagram first of all let me draw the diagram a constant head water tank has on one of its vertical side two identical small orifices issuing two horizontal jets in the same vertical plane there are two orifices the vertical distance between the center of the orifice is 1.5 meter let us say this and there are two orifices one is here let us say and another is here this is one this is two there are two orifices and the distance between the two orifices is 1.5 meter the distance between the vertical distance between the two orifices is 1.5 meter and the jet trajectories intersect at a point 0.5 meter below the lower orifice they will intersect like this this will flow like this this is going to flow like this and the water from the second orifice is going to flow like this let me see this is where they are intersecting let me draw like this this is how the water will come out so this is the point of intersection and the point of intersection is 0.5 meter the point of intersection is 0.5 meter below the lower orifice this is 0.5 isn't it this is 0.5 now the question is to find the approximate height of water level in the tank we need to find out the height of water level in the tank above the point of intersection of the trajectory so we need to find out this height do you understand this will be greater than 2.5 uh, it is definitely be greater than 2.5 uh, sorry 2 h do you understand it is greater than 2 meter isn't it from the figure itself can we say h will be greater than 2 meter yes or no it will be greater than 0.5 plus 1.5 meter so it is greater than 2 i don't know how the question was framed that these three options cannot fulfill the criteria so without any calculation you get the answer as 2.5 without any calculation you get the answer as 2.5 but how to solve it can you guys solve it can you guys solve it now how to solve you should know how to solve what is the value of v1 if i ask you value of v1 do you agree value of v1 is determined by this height v1 is equal to under root 2 into g into this h1 what is h1 h1 is h minus 2 do you agree or not what is the velocity v2 that will be determined by this height h2 isn't it so under root 2g what is h2 so can we say h2 is equal to h minus 0.5 do you understand v1 and v2 now the range is same the range will be same isn't it the horizontal range will be same r will be same for both the range will be same r will be same so v1 is like this and v2 is like this initially they are moving in a horizontal direction two horizontal jets so can we say v the range will be equal to can we say v1 into t1 the time taken by v1 to reach here that is range is equal to v2 into t2 is equal to r 
डू यू एग्री और नॉट वी वन इंटू टी वन इज इगल टू वी टू इंटू टी टू इज इगल टू आर हाउ टू फाइंड आउट द टाइम टेकन फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम द न्यूटन इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन एज वी नो एस इज इक्वल टू यू टी प्लस हाफ ए टी स्क्वायर इफ वी राइट इन वर्टिकल डायरेक्शन वॉट इज दट इज द वेलोसी इन वर्टिकल डायरेक्शन यू इज इगल टू जीरो कैन वी से इन वर्टिकल डायरेक्शन यू इज इगल टू जीरो दिस विल बी जीरो इन वर्टिकल डायरेक्शन इनिशियल वेलोसिटी विल बी जीरो एंड ए विल बी इक्वल टू एक्सेलरेशन ड्यू टू ग्रेविटी ए विल बी एक्सेलरेशन ड्यू टू ग्रेविटी इन द डायरेक्शन ऑफ फ्लो सो कैन वी से टी इज इक्वल टू अंडर रूट ऑफ टू एस बाई जी सो वॉट इज टी वन कैन वी राइट टी वन इज इक्वल टू टू वॉट इज एस वर्टिकल डिस्टेंस एस इज द वर्टिकल डिस्टेंस वॉट इज एस वन एस वन इज दिस फ्रॉम पॉइंट वन टू दिस पॉइंट एस वन इज टू एस वन इज इक्वल टू टू मीटर डू यू अंडरस्टैंड इट और नॉट वॉट इज द टाइम टेकन टी टू टू इन टू वॉट इज एस टू वॉट इज एस टू एस टू डिस्टेंस इज पॉइंट फाइव एस टू दिस इज द डिस्टेंस एस टू जीरो पॉइंट फाइव आई होप यू आर एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड इट जीरो पॉइंट फाइव बाई जी इफ यू पुट दीज वैल्यूज इन इक्वेशन नंबर वन put the values in equation number 1 put in equation number 1 which is v1 into t1 is equal to v2 into t2 so what is v1 that is under root 2g what is v1 2g h minus 2 2g h minus 2 into t1 that is under root of 4 by g is equal to uh, v2 what is v2 2g h minus 5.5 Into t2 that is one by under root of one by g, isn't it? If you simplify this, this two g two g getting cancel out, they will get cancel out. Denominator get cancel out. So the finally it is under root of h minus two into two is equal to under root of four will be two is equal to under root of h minus zero point five into one, isn't it? If you take the square on both sides, so h minus two. Into four will be equal to h minus zero point five. Can you find out the value of h? Can you find out the value of h? Why not practically possible, Shahid? Why not practically possible? It is practically possible. Do you understand it? Can you find out the value of h? Are you getting two point five meter or not? Are you getting two point five meter or not? Are you able to get it? So this is beautiful question, but the question can become simple if you understand. So without any calculation, you get the answer. But with the calculation answer, you should be able to get the right answer. All right. So the next one, the next question, this type of question was asked in ISRO uh, in Gate PYQ. If you know this type of question was asked in gate PYQ. वाई क्यू नहीं नहीं ये क्वेश्चन नहीं था यह तो सिंपल है दिस क्वेश्चन प्लीज सॉल्व दिस वन नहीं शायद ये क्वेश्चन जो मैं आपके सामने लेके आया हूं ना वो गेट के हैं ना वो किसी किसी एग्जामिनेशन के नहीं है दे आर पिक्ड फ्रॉम सम सम सोर्सेज they are not pyqs these questions are not pyqs the liquid is flowing separately through each of these two pipes whose diameters are in the ratio so d1 by d2 is equal to 2 if the ratio of the velocity v1 by v2 is equal to 1 by 2 then the ratio of amounts or the liquid amounts of the liquid flowing per second it means the discharge through the pipes will be we need to find out the value of q1 by q2 can we say this is d1 by d2 whole square Into v1 by v2. What is the answer? What is the answer? D1 by d2 whole square into v1 by v2. Four into one by two. Two two is to one. Isn't it option A? Isn't it option A? Question number seventeen. Let us move to question number eighteen quickly. Are you getting it? The next one. Newton is the unit of force. Everybody knows that. 
न्यूटन इज द यूनिट ऑफ फोर्स इट इज द यूनिट इन विच इट इज द यूनिट इन विच सिस्टम न्यूटन इज द यूनिट यस एसआई यूनिट एंड एमकेएस यूनिट्स आर सेम एमकेएस सिस्टम इज वाज द ब्लू प्रिंट ऑफ द रिसेंट एसआई सिस्टम वाज द प्रीवियस सिस्टम फॉर द न्यूली developed SI system. So if SI system is not there, MKS will be the answer. Option A will be the correct answer for this one. In a venturi flume, the flow takes place at what is the venturi flame? Venturi flame is the device for measuring the flow rate. where flow rates are very high are very high like rivers in case of rivers dams the flow rate is measured by the venturi flume venturimeter is used to measure the flow rate in case of a pipe so in case of rivers the flows the fluid flows at atmospheric pressure the fluid flows at atmospheric pressure venturi flow flame is used to measure the flow rate when the flows are at atmospheric pressure option a this question is standard type of question from the vortex motion the total pressure on the top it is the total pressure means the pressure force it is about the force on the top of the closed cylindrical vessel completely filled with a liquid there was a question similar type of question as in gate exam so we can say pressure is a function of r how it is varying that is given by rho into v square by r sorry rho v square by 2 pressure is given by rho v square by 2 or we can say p is equal to rho by 2 omega square into r square now area da will be equal to 2 pi r into dr we want to find out the pressure force we need to go for integration so we can say pressure is proportional to r square so pressure is proportional to r square so force will be proportional to integration of p into da or we can say force will be proportional to integration of proportional to integration of r square into r into dr from 0 to r can you do the integration so it is integration of r cube dr it will be the integration of r cube dr that will be proportional to radius to the power 4. It is proportional to, no, Shahid, it will not be square of radius. It will be proportional to radius to the power 4. Integration of r cube dr from 0 to r. So, f will be proportional to pressure force will be proportional to r to the power 4. It is the total pressure force. Pressure is the variable. It does not, it, pressure as such is not a function of radius. Pressure is the function of radial distance. The question is about capital R, radius. The question is about capital R. It means it is about the pressure force. Are you getting it? Yehi to catch a aspirant. That is what you need to understand. And that comes with a lot of practice. The more you practice, the more you practice, the more comfortable becomes with these type of situations, right? Because it is about the capital R radius. Radius comes into picture only when we do the integration. Otherwise, it is a variable. P is a variable parameter. It has nothing to do with the top or bottom. Pressure varies. This expression is not only for top or not only for back bottom. In any horizontal plane, pressure varies with R square. In any horizontal plane, pressure varies with R square. Are you getting it? But because it is about the radius of the pipe. Now, when the Mach number is more than 6, the flow is called. The flow is called. Subsonic flow, when the Mach number is less than 1. When the V is less than C. Sonic flow, when the Mach number is equal to 1. V is equal to C. Supersonic flow, 
when Mach number is greater than 1 but less than 6. Hypersonic flow when the Mach number is greater than 6. V is very very large compared to C. This is called as hypersonic flow. The, the flow will be hypersonic. The next question 23 question number 23 second last question for the day the discharge through a convergent mouthpiece is fill in the blank the discharge through an internal mouthpiece what is the mouthpiece what is the mouthpiece short length pipe fitted in the tank to measure the flow mouthpiece is a short length pipe fitted in in the tank the short length pipe which is fitted in the tank to measure the flow that is called as mouthpiece so there are two ways the mouthpiece are attached one is like this this is the mouthpiece another is like this so when it is like this then the velocity is proportional to pressure. Velocity is due to pressure and pressure is given by rho g h. h. And here when we are having the mouthpiece as converging section, when the mouthpiece is like a converging section, then the velocity is due to pressure plus v. So, it is twice of p v dash becomes twice of p which is proportional to twice of h v dash will be proportional to twice of h so when it is convergent then the velocity will be twice then the discharge will be discharge is proportional to velocity discharge is proportional to velocity so the discharge will be will be twice for the convergent mouthpiece compared to the internal mouthpiece the discharge will be double it will be double the discharge will be double for a convergent mouthpiece compared to the internal mouthpiece right and the last question for the day two small orifices this type of question was asked in gate pyq not exactly same but yes this type of question was asked Two small orifices A and B of diameters 1 cm and 2 cm. This is D1, this is D2. Respectively are placed on the side of a tank at a depth of H1 and H2 below the open free surface. If the discharge through A and B are equal, QA is equal to QB. Then the ratio of H1 and H2 will be. The question is to find a relation between H and diameter. The question is to find the relation between H and diameter. Right? So we can say V is under root 2 g h so v is directly proportional to root h that is one equation and q is equal to pi by 4 d square into v that is constant discharge is constant so we can say v is inversely proportional to d square that is another equation right so by combining these two by combining these two one and two can we say 1 by d square is proportional to root h or we can say d square is proportional to 1 upon h to the power 1 by 2. If you take a square root on both sides, so we will get, sorry, so if we take a square on both sides, so 1 by d square is proportional to h. Are you getting it? So, h is proportional to 1 by d square. So, h1 by h2 is equal to, it is not 1 by d square, it is 1 by d to the power 4. So, h1 by h2 is d2 by d1 to the power 1 by 4. Sorry. It will be to the power 4. Are you getting it? h is proportional to 1 upon d to the power 4. So, it is d2 by d1 to the power 4. What is d2? 2. What is d1? 1 to the power 4. So, it will be 16 is to 1. h1 by h2 will be 16 is to 1. Alright. So, that is all from my side guys. 
I will share the PDF of this session to my Telegram group. If you have not joined me on the Telegram yet, please do join me. Uh, there is mo one more question. The last question. This is the last question. Sorry. So do like and share this session, guys, and see you in the next session. What is the answer to this last question? Quickly, <laughs> aspirant, one more question. Hai. Last one. Again, from the assumption of Bernoulli equation. there is loss of liquid while flowing that is not correct there should not be any any mass transfer there should not be any energy transfer option b second says there is no external force except that the gravity acts on the liquid yes there should not be any external force the velocity of energy of the liquid particles across any cross section is of the pipe is uniform yes there should not be any relative motion no relative motion so there is no no energy loss when there is no relative motion otherwise the flow will become real so 2 and 3 are correct both 2 and 3 d is the right answer all right d will be the correct answer well done jabir jabir aap abhi aaye arun bahut sare log to abhi aaye thank you guys thank you very much for your love to the session and your energy participation you can always connect with me through the mail id which is there on the top of the screen and you can join me on the telegram also mechanical by chandrashekar if you are not part of my telegram group here thank you guys thank you very much enjoy take care have a good day and a great career ahead